In this class, we are going to talk about the harmonic oscillator. Harmonic oscillator. Harmonic oscillator. And we are going to concentrate on the quantum mechanical treatment of the harmonic oscillator. We already know the classical mechanical picture of the harmonic oscillator. If you have forgotten, I will give you a short introduction of the classical mechanical picture of the harmonic oscillator. Okay, you know a pendulum of a clock. Pendulum of a clock. Okay, this is a pendulum of a clock. And uh, this pendulum of the clock is oscillating, right? It is oscillating to the right and uh, reaches some height. And then it comes back to the rest position or it comes back to the middle position. And then it goes in the other direction to the same height. Okay, right. So then it stops for a while and then comes back and reaches here the central position and goes back to the right position again and then it comes back to the left then right left right like that right and there is a periodic oscillation like this and this oscillation is called a harmonic oscillation okay actually the pendulum of a clock is a close approximation to a harmonic oscillator so this is the this oscillation harmonic oscillation is actually the back and forth motion along the same path right back and forth motion along the same path in which displacement from an equilibrium position this is the equilibrium position where the pendulum was resting at the beginning okay that is the equilibrium position and the displacement from this equilibrium position varies right varies periodically with the time right means in the initial time the pendulum was here then it reaches here which the displacement is increasing right it displacement is increasing and it, it reaches a maximum distance okay after a certain time then then it comes back to here okay and then it goes into the other direction taking the same time how much time it took to reach here from the central position to the right extreme position the same time it will take to reach from the central position to the left extreme position right so that is a periodic motion and this type of motion is called a harmonic motion or harmonic vibration okay so that is a back and forth motion along the same path in which displacement from an equilibrium position varies periodically with uh, time okay and and this time period okay time period means it go it it goes from here from the center position it goes here and then it comes back to uh, the, the center position then again goes to the left and then again come back to the central position then it completes one complete oscillation okay it's it makes one complete oscillation and the time required for this okay that is called the time period and that time period will be fixed means when it is performing the second complete oscillation it will take the same time which was taken for the first complete oscillation alle randamatha complete oscillation aadithe complete oscillation etra time aanu eduthathu athreyum thanne time aayirikkum randamatha complete oscillation edukkunnathu athreyum thanne time aayirikkum moonamatha complete oscillation edukkunnathu angane oru periodic aayittulla oru motion aanu idu alle appo ingane ulla motion aanu nammal simple harmonic motion ennu parayunnathu simple harmonic motion simple harmonic motion simple harmonic harmonic motion okay simple harmonic motion so we are going to treat this simple harmonic oscillator simple harmonic oscillator okay and we wanted to see how the quantum mechanics treat a simple harmonic oscillator okay why it is important for us because even in the microscopic world we can see this type of simple harmonic oscillator okay in macroscopic world we have seen a number of simple harmonic oscillator just like what we discuss now the pendulum of a clock it's a clock's approximation to the simple harmonic oscillator or a weight which is hanging on a uh, spring okay there is a spring attached to the wall and some weight is there 
uh, hanging on the uh, hanging uh, in the spring and now the spring is at the rest position you suppose that you are stretching the spring to certain extent to here and then you release it then the next moment this spring will go back to the rest position and it will not stop there then it will go to the uh, it will go to the other side uh, if it is going to the same extent to the other side then we can say that it is a simple harmonic oscillation okay so you suppose that this is a weightless spring and a mass is hanging on this weightless spring and this motion can be a close approximation to a simple harmonic oscillation we have seen a number of oscillations like in the macroscopic world and also in our day-to-day -day experience right and why we are interested in this type of motion in quantum mechanics also because in the microscopic world also you can see this type of oscillation for example you are taking uh, some molecule like uh, uh, hcl okay or hydrogen molecule itself the simplest uh, molecule hh okay there is one ball here this ball is nothing but the hydrogen atom and there is another ball here this is also hydrogen atom and this is the bond between the two hydrogen atoms this bond acts like a spring okay it means that it is not very rigid but it is flexible so the hydrogen atoms at, at, at some time the hydrogen atom will be like this and in the next moment this spring structures okay the spring structure so that the, 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 the hydrogen molecule will be elongated like this hydrogen molecule will be elongated like this okay and in the other uh, in the next time then it will be compressed okay so that the this the 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 length the the distance between the hydrogen atoms will be decreased okay so we can see that there is an elongation and a compression okay and this vibrate this type of vibration can be can be approximated to a simple harmonic oscillator okay so in the microscopic world also you can see this type of oscillators and that is why we are interested in the quantum mechanical treatment of the harmonic oscillator or simple harmonic oscillator okay okay and uh, so in order to understand the quantum mechanical treatment of the simple harmonic oscillator we must have some basic understanding of the classical mechanical treatment of the harmonic oscillator or simple harmonic oscillator and in this video i am going to give you this introduction that is how the classical mechanics picturize the or treat the the, the the simple harmonic oscillator okay i am not going to derive every equation because you have already gone this time gone through this uh, this uh, classical mechanical picture in your undergraduate course okay so i am not going to elaborate everything i will give you only the the the, the, the equations that you want to understand the classical treatment of the simple harmonic oscillator okay and uh, we know that in the um, in the simple harmonic oscillation there is a rest position or a mean position for example uh, this particle is here and this particle wants to make an oscillation in the x direction means that this particle goes here in the positive x direction and then it reaches some point here and then it comes back to the rest position and then it it goes in the in minus x direction and it reaches the, the, the same extreme okay whatever may be the length from the middle point to the right extreme the same will be the length from the the the, the distance from the middle point to the left extreme so if this if this uh, motion continues periodically then we can call this as a symbol harmonic oscillator okay and uh, you know that this is equilibrium position actually the particle wants to reside in this equilibrium position but somehow the particle is making the vibration right and uh, when the particle is moving away from this equilibrium position or when the particle is making some displacement okay for example it is moving in this direction actually there is a force acting in the reverse direction okay or acting towards the equilibrium position so this is the movement uh, this is the displacement in the x direction and then there is a force acting in the opposite direction to, uh, to reverse the particle towards the equilibrium position okay so this force actually is proportional to the displacement in the brain union if it is the equilibrium position and then the particle displacement the force is going to be okay 
when the particle reaches the extreme and at that time the force will be very high so that there will be a force acting the force acting to 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 to, to retrieve or to bring back the 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 particle to the equilibrium position and this force is proportional to this force is proportional to sorry let me take another color uh, and this force is proportional to uh, the displacement or uh, we can say that force is proportional to the displacement and therefore f is equal to uh, minus kx i have given a minus sign to show that um, the displacement and the force are in the opposite direction if the particle is moving in this direction then the force is acting in the other direction that is why a minus sign is given here k is the proportionality constant here okay so f is equal to minus curves um, minus kx and here the proportionality constant that we introduced this proportionality constant is called the force constant force constant force constant okay and this law is called the hooke's law hooke's law this is called the hooke's law hooke's law okay and you all already know this hooke's law because you have already uh, learned this uh, harmonic oscillator in your physics course in the undergraduate uh, in physics papers in the undergraduate course okay so here uh, f is equal to minus kx where x is the displacement from the equilibrium position and the k is a force constant and also we know that let me let me call this as equation number one and also we know that from newton's laws of motion from newton's laws of motion we know that f is equal to m a right f is equal to m a where a is the acceleration okay acceleration can also be written like d square d square x divided by d t square that is a second derivative of the displacement with respect to time that is acceleration what is velocity velocity is the first derivative of displacement with respect to time and acceleration is the second derivative of x with respect to time so we can write like f is equal to m into d square x divided by d t square okay and let this be equation number two okay and here we know that there are two expressions for force that is f is equal to minus kx and f is equal to m d square x by dt square from 1 and 2 okay so we can write like minus kx minus kx is equal to m into d square x divided by dt square right and therefore d square x by dt square d square x by dt square is equal to minus k divided by m minus k divided by m into x right so let this be equation number three okay and uh, if we are calling this k by m k by m okay the the the, the this this term k by m k by m as omega square okay if we call this k by m as omega square we can write equation number three as d square x divided by dt square is equal to minus omega square into x or then we can rearrange this equation as d square x divided by sorry let me write it better there is will be confused sorry okay d square sorry again d square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to zero let me call this as equation number four okay this equation is a familiar equation for you because you have already learned this type of equation this type of differential equation in uh, when we were treating the uh, the particle in one dimensional box right so you know this already d square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to zero there we learned the equation uh, d squares i d squares i by dx square plus k squares i uh, is equal to uh, zero we we learned this type of an equation right and we know that what was the solution of this equation the solution of this equation was like psi is equal to a sin kx plus b cos k 
kx we know this solution right so similarly we can do this we can take the solution for this differential equation also here the solution is expression for x right therefore x is equal to in this case x is equal to a sin omega omega uh, uh, omega t okay a sin omega t omega t okay plus uh, b cos omega t because in place of k we have omega square right and in place of x here we have t in our equation so a sin omega t plus b cos omega t a sin omega t plus b cos omega t this is a solution for this equation let me call this as equation number five okay and uh, if v if nu is the frequency of the vibration frequency of the vibration what is the frequency of vibration the number of vibrations in unit time that is called a frequency okay and if we call nu as the frequency frequency of vibration or frequency of oscillation okay and we can prove that omega is equal to omega what is appearing here this omega is related to the frequency that is omega is equal to 2 pi nu i am not going to the derivation of this equation because it is not uh, th th that is not the center point of our discussion i am actually trying to give you the quantum mechanical treatment of the harmonic oscillator this is just an introduction of the classical treatment of harmonic oscillator if you are uh, interested in the derivations of this you can you can refer any undergraduate textbooks in physics okay you will get the derivation of this one okay we are not spending time for this here at this moment that's all so omega is related to the frequency as omega is equal to 2 pi nu okay omega is equal to 2 pi nu or therefore nu is equal to let me call this as equation number uh, 6 therefore nu is equal to nu is equal to omega divided by 2 pi right that is uh, that is equal to uh, what is omega uh, omega is equal to root of k by m right we have uh, we have k by m as omega square we know that k by m is omega square therefore omega is equal to root of k divided by b okay so let me substitute for omega here in this equation for nu is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi into root of k divided by m okay where k is the force constant and m is the mass of the particle okay and uh, now we have an expression for the frequency of a vibration that is 1 by 2 pi into root of k by m okay so this is an important uh, equation this is an important equation let me put that in a uh, square okay or in a box so nu is equal to root of uh, 1 by 2 pi into root of uh, k by m and let me call this as uh, equation number 7 okay and now i am going to talk about the potential energy of the oscillation potential energy of oscillation potential energy of oscillation at any given point okay the potential energy at any given point x at any given point x okay so the potential energy at any given point x is given by v is equal to half half k x square okay v is equal to half k x square again i am not going to the derivation of all these things okay i'm just giving you only the equations in the classical mechanical treatment and we will discuss quantum mechanical treatment elaborately that's all so v is equal to half k x square if x is the displacement of the particle from the mean position at any given time then potential energy is equal to half k x square let me call this as equation number eight okay and i am going to give you the total energy expression also total energy total energy will be the uh, sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy and the total energy of the system uh, e is equal to half k a square okay so let me call this as uh, equation number nine okay total energy is equal to half k a square 
and therefore kinetic energy kinetic uh, energy kinetic energy t is equal to total energy e minus v right therefore tot kinetic energy is equal to half k a square that is the total energy minus a uh, half a k x square right that is half k into a square minus s square this is the kinetic energy of the of the particle okay at any point x so now we have the expressions for the potential energy kinetic energy and uh, total energy okay and what i am going to do now is i am going to plot this uh, uh, plot this uh, potential energy uh, against uh, x okay so we have a graph here <coughs> So let me plot a graph here. Okay, this is the y-axis, and uh, here I am going to take going to take the x-axis. Okay, in the y-axis I will take the energy. Okay, and in the x-axis I will take uh, the displacement. So the displacement. This is a displacement in the positive x direction plus x direction. And the displacement in the minus x direction. Okay, so this is x is equal to zero. Okay, so <clears throat> when the, the 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 particle is at uh, uh, at extremes, you can see that at the extremes, potential energy at the extreme position. What is the extreme position? If we take uh, a, a as the extreme position, sorry, I forgot to mention this is a is the extreme position of the particle. Okay, that is a maximum distance that the particle can cover. Okay, if this is the extreme position from here, from the equilibrium position to this, okay, that is EA. Okay, and that is from here to here, that is EA. Okay, so A is the extreme position that might, that is maximum displacement of the particle. So this point corresponds to plus EA plus EA. That is. The maximum displacement in the uh, positive x direction, and this point corresponds to this point corresponds to minus a. That is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position in the uh, minus x direction. That is from here to here. That is this point is minus a. Okay, and uh, when the particle is at extremes, okay, means suppose the particle is at the plus a. Okay, at that time, the potential energy, okay, at the extremes, at the extremes, means at a and extreme means plus or minus a, right? At the extremes, the potential energy, uh, the potential energy is equal to, that is, v is equal to half k x square, okay? So x is equal to plus a or minus a, right? So half k square is equal to half into k into uh, plus or minus a the whole square. That is equal to half k a square. Means at the extremes, the potential energy is half k a square. And uh, what about the kinetic energy at that time? The kinetic energy T is equal to um, total energy minus potential energy. Total energy is half k a square. Half k a square, and the potential energy at that time is half k a square. Therefore, kinetic energy is equal to zero. It means that the particle reaches the extreme points, whether it is minus a or plus a. Okay, when particle reaches this extreme point, this point and this point, then it comes to rest. Le, mag nema ke do hi kya unne ari mein bolu. Ibrada unne clock unne pendulum nyota arnu yari kya, and extreme position chilnu. Extreme position is in the area and the area of 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 the by the extreme position, uh, for a moment, it stops. Right? 
അപ്പം അത് സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്നു അതായത് എക്സ്ട്രീം പൊസിഷനിൽ വരുമ്പം അതിൻ്റെ മോഷൻ സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്നു അപ്പം മോഷൻ സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്യുകയാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ എൻ്റെ അർത്ഥം എന്താണ് അതിൻ്റെ ലോസിറ്റി സീറോ ആകുന്നു എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അതിൻ്റെ കൈനറ്റിക് എനർജി സീറോ ആകുന്നു അപ്പോൾ എക്സ്ട്രീം പൊസിഷനുകളിൽ പ്ലസ് എയിലായാലും മൈനസ് എയിലായാലും അതിൻ്റെ എക്സ്ട്രീം പൊസിഷനിൽ അതിൻ്റെ കൈനറ്റിക് എനർജി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സീറോ ആണ് അത് തന്നെയാണ് നമ്മളിവിടെ തെളിയിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് സോ ഇൻ ദ എക്സ്ട്രീം പൊസിഷൻ കൈനറ്റിക് എനർജി ഈസ് സീറോ സോ ഓൺലി വൺ എനർജി ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് പോസിബിൾ അറ്റ് ദ എക്സ്ട്രീം പൊസിഷൻ ഈസ് ദ പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ എനർജി ആൻഡ് ദർ ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ എനർജി ഈസ് ഹാഫ് കെ എ സ്ക്വയർ ഓക്കെ ഇനി ഇക്വിലിബ്രിയം പൊസിഷൻസിലോ അറ്റ് ഇക്വിലിബ്രിയം പൊസിഷൻസ് ഇക്വിലിബ്രിയം പൊസിഷൻസ് ഇക്വിലിബ്രിയം പൊസിഷൻസ് So, what is the equilibrium position? How we can characterize the equilibrium position? At the equilibrium position, x is equal to 0. Therefore, potential energy at the equilibrium position. Potential energy is equal to half kx square. That is half into 0 square. That is equal to uh, 0. So, at the equilibrium position or in the central point, the potential energy is 0. But what about the kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is equal to half kx. k a square that is total energy minus potential energy that is zero that is equal to half k a square so in the central point the kinetic energy is maximum and potential energy is zero so we can now uh, now we can uh, see what is the energy profile of the of the harmonic oscillator so harmonic oscillator will have a maximum kinetic energy when it is in the middle point right and this kinetic energy will decrease and comes to zero when it reaches the extreme and then it goes back when it goes back then its kinetic energy will increase and the kinetic energy will again reach maximum when it is in the midpoint then it goes to the next side and when it is going to the next direction or minus x direction again its kinetic energy will decrease and when it reaches minus a its kinetic energy will become zero okay at that time it will have maximum potential energy that is half k square so when it is coming back to the equilibrium position again potential energy will decrease kinetic energy will increase and when it reaches the midpoint the kinetic energy will be maximum that is half k square and potential energy at this point will be zero okay this is the energy profile of the harmonic oscillator so how can we plot this energy profile okay we know that the maximum energy is half k x square or total energy is half k x square so let me suppose that uh, this is half k x square this uh, energy level is half k x square this corresponds to half k x square half k x square okay so that is the total energy so when the the part the particle is at the plus a at that time its uh, total energy is half k square and it will have maximum potential energy so if you are plotting the potential energy at plus a the potential energy will be here right this is a potential energy at plus a this is a potential energy at plus a so when it is coming back to the equilibrium position then what will happen x will decrease as the x decreases the potential energy will decrease because potential energy is half k x square right so potential energy will gradually decrease as x decreases potential energy will decrease like this decrease like this and when it reaches x is equal to zero then potential energy will be zero mean at the midpoint the potential energy will be zero and when it is again moving to the other extreme then the potential energy will again increase because it is minus x and the potential energy is half k x square even if it is minus x x the square of minus x is x square itself so potential energy will again increase when it is going to the other extreme potential energy will increase 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 and when it reaches minus a the potential energy will be maximum that is half k square so if you are plotting this this is a potential energy potential energy plot so my pen is not very good that is why i am not meeting all the points otherwise this is a potential energy plot so this is the potential energy plots okay potential energy plot so this is how the potential energy of the harmonic oscillator varies with the uh, displacement you can see that when the displacement is zero potential energy is zero and when the displacement is plus a the potential energy is half k square it reaches this line 
and when the displacement is minus a again the potential energy meets this line that is half k a square right so this is the plot of the potential energy okay and if you are plotting the kinetic energy kinetic energy's plot will be uh, the, the the so this is a parabola so the kinetic energy is plot will be the inverted parabola right the kinetic energy's plot will be like this means if you are plotting the kinetic energy it will be like this okay so when it is uh, reach when it goes to the equilibrium position the kinetic energy will increase in the initially here kinetic energy is zero when it reaches the midpoint the kinetic energy become maximum that is half k square and when it is coming back to the extreme positions extreme position then the kinetic energy will decrease kinetic energy will decrease like this and it, when it reaches the other extreme the kinetic energy will again become zero okay so this is the uh, the, the the dotted line that is this one this is the kinetic energy and this one that is a yellow line this is a potential energy and this shows this shows this orange line dotted orange line this shows the total energy that is a total energy or e okay total energy so <clears throat> you can see that there is no uh, limit of the energies here okay so you can see that uh, if you are taking any any uh, any uh, any of this one the, the classical mechanics does not put any limit in this energy there is no parameter which restrict the possible values of energy here so the harmonic oscillator can oscillate with any value of energy for example if the harmonic oscillator is oscillating with this total energy then it's a its energy profile will be like this from here to here okay and you suppose that the harmonic oscillator can take any of the uh, energy profile means sometimes the harmonic oscillator can flow, uh, oscillate in this one in this energy profile suppose that this is the total energy this is the total energy e and then the harmonic oscillator can oscillate from this point through the midpoint to this point right so what will be the maximum displacement at that time if this is uh, e for example you suppose that this is en okay then at that time in the minus x direction it will go to the maximum maximum displacement xn and in the plus x direction it will go for a maximum displacement of plus xn okay here minus xn and here plus xn okay so if you are if the harmonic oscillator is taking another energy profile for example let me draw it with a, a pink line okay this one you can take this total energy for example this is the total energy ek at this moment and at that time the harmonic oscillator will oscillate from this x to this uh, this point the point corresponds to this one means that is minus xk and then it will oscillate through the midpoint and it reaches a maximum distance of plus x k okay so there is no restriction that the, the harmonic oscillator can take any energy profile it can take this profile it can take an energy profile just below that or it can take again an energy profile which is even in between this one and this one this one this one this one this one, this one, this one everywhere within this right everywhere within this the harmonic oscillator can adopt its energy profile so there is no limitation to the energy of the harmonic oscillator actually what the, what is this 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 plot actually also is giving the uh, the plot of its position also so if, if you know the energy of the harmonic oscillator you can see the extreme positions of the the particle okay so uh, from this is the this is the classical mechanical picture of uh, a harmonic oscillator so if the harmonic oscillator is having some particular energy there is some limit for its uh, extreme positions right there is some limit for its uh, extreme position or this is called the turning positions turning points turning points point turning point and this turning point corresponds to these are also the turning point and these two turning points corresponds to the turning point corresponding to corresponding to en Okay. this is the right turning point corresponding to 
En. And if the energy profile is corresponding to Ek, this is the turning point, right turning point corresponding to corresponding to uh, the energy Ek, total energy Ek. And this is a left turning point, turning point corresponding to the energy Ek. Okay. So for every energy, every amount of total energy, there will be some fixed turning points in the right and the left side. Okay. So this is what we can understand from the classical classical picture of the harmonic oscillator. And now, if you are take, if you are if you are drawing a, a perpendicular anywhere, a perpendicular anywhere. For example, if you are drawing a perpendicular here, okay. And let me take another color. Let me check which color, gray color. Okay. So I am drawing a perpendicular here, and let me call this as uh, let me call this point as P, and this point where it reaches this potential energy curve. This is Q, and where it reaches the total energy line that is R. Okay. And P Q in this case. PQ in this case, what will be the PQ in this case? That is the potential energy. Okay, PQ in this case is a potential energy. And what will be the kinetic energy then? Ah, you know that PR is the total energy. From here to here, PR is the total energy. PR is the total energy E. Therefore, what is the kinetic energy? Ah, kinetic energy is the PR minus PQ, that is QR. Therefore, kinetic energy T is equal to QR. Okay. So, you can draw a perpendicular at any point and you can get the potential energy corresponding to that displacement, the kinetic energy corresponding to that displacement and the total energy corresponding to that displacement. Total energy is always constant, independent of the displacement, but the kinetic energy and potential energy will vary. Okay. So, this is a classical mechanical treatment of the harmonic oscillator. I hope you understood uh, the classical treatment of the harmonic oscillator and uh, it is very important here something to note okay something to note very important things that the classical harmonic oscillator has no restriction of the energy it can take any energy okay but corresponding to the energy or any energy of the harmonic oscillator there will be some extreme points, fixed extreme points. Corresponding to every energy, there will be some fixed extreme points. Okay. And that extreme points will represent its potential barrier. Okay. So if the kinetic if the total energy is Ek here, the potential barrier is at this minus xk position and also at the plus xk positions. Okay. So this is what we can understand from the classical mechanical treatment of the harmonic oscillator. I hope you understood everything about the classical mechanical treatment of the harmonic oscillator. Again, keep in mind that I haven't gone through the derivations. If you are interested in the derivations, I suggest you to go to the undergraduate physics books and get the derivations of this one. And in the next video, we will see how we can treat this harmonic oscillator quantum mechanically. And we are going to expect some interesting results there different from the results that we got in the classical mechanical treatment okay that we will do in the next uh, class and uh, i thank you for watching if you have any doubt uh, please don't hesitate to ask me and i am always happy to help you and you can comment here or you can call me or you can text me or you can message me in the whatsapp or whatever way you want and uh, i will be happy to help you okay and once again thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned